Inside the RP Funding Center in Lakeland. This is the 8A Girls Basketball Championship game here on MySpectrumSports.com. It is the Titans of Tampa Bay Tech in their first ever championship game appearance, taking on the Raiders from St. Thomas Aquinas. We will have a first time champion this afternoon in the 8A final. Highly anticipated matchup, two of the top teams in the state, regardless of classification. Tampa Bay Tech has found success on the defensive end of the floor, a young athletic team that has smothered opponents throughout the season. They limited Bartram Trail to just 32 points in yesterday's semifinal. St. Thomas Aquinas, an outstanding offensive team. The Raiders want to get up and down the floor. They beat St. Cloud 67-46 in yesterday's semifinal. Led that game by as many as 29. All five starters finished in double figures to help get them to this afternoon's championship game. The spotlight is on some youngsters for Tampa Bay Tech, specifically freshman Janiah Barker, one of the best in the country. She is one of the best in the country, and she is only a freshman, like you said, six foot three. And don't be surprised to see her step out and knock down some threes. Six foot three and outstanding athleticism from Janiah Barker. Aquinas counters with Bella Lachance, the junior averaging almost 18 per game, headed to play in the SEC at Vanderbilt. And you might not see her best right away. The fourth quarter is where she shines. So even if you don't see a lot from her here early on, she's going to be a closer for St. Thomas Aquinas. And as you can see, she is really overwhelmed by the <laughs> moment of playing in the state championship game. So nervous before she take the floor. Here are the starting lineups. First for Tampa Bay Tech. There's the youth movement we talked about. Three sophomores and the two freshmen, Janiah Barker and Amaya Evans, both of them moved from Pensacola to Tampa Bay, and they have found a home at Tampa Bay Tech to get the Titans into the championship game for the first time. Reggie Lawrence on the job for a decade at Tampa Bay Tech, brought his team to the state tournament for the second consecutive year, played football in high school and college, but has found his passion as a girls basketball coach. 
The first five for St. Thomas Aquinas, loaded with transfers. Samara Spencer played in the championship game last year for Fort Myers. She comes back to Fort Lauderdale and St. Thomas Aquinas. Angeli Rodriguez played at Ferguson last year, and Abigail Shue is a transfer from Stoneman. Douglas Shue signed with Columbia. 26-year-old Oliver Behrens went to Miami Country Day, was the manager of the girls' basketball team for all four years under O'Keel Swaby, an assistant for all four years in college. He was part of the first two state championships for Miami Country Day, and now has a chance to win his own title with St. Thomas Aquinas. Athletic program that has experienced so much success, but they've never won a state championship in girls' basketball, so a chance to make history for the Raiders today would also be the first title for Tampa Bay Tech, and we are underway here in the 8A title game. Aquinas with an odd front, kind of a 3-2 zone here defensively. Kanisha Godfrey hoisting a three, just a 24% three-point shooter, but she knocks down her first attempt. And when you do come out in a zone like that, the other team can come out and be uh, much more comfortable against the zone. Drive by Samara Spencer, pulled down by Evans. Both these teams want to get up and down. Barker got position inside and laid it in. And Tampa Bay Tech known for their defense, showing great signs of offense here early. The Tampa Bay Tech has held opponents under 30 points 15 times this year. Incredible how good they are on that end of the floor. But Aquinas can certainly shoot at Haley Murphy. Signed with St. Francis of Pennsylvania with that triple. And it was all set up by Bella Lachance, the Vanderbilt signee. Dribble drive and kick to that sweet lefty stroke. A deflection there from Murphy. Ball goes into the backcourt, retrieved by Barker. Tampa Bay Tech, the only team in the country this year to beat Miami Country Day. The Spartans number one in the nation by some publications. They won the 4A championship earlier this year. That was 58-57 in mid-December. Kanisha Godfrey lost the handle inside, picked up by Lachance. He's got Murphy up ahead, tries to throw it the length of the floor. Jayla Murray deflects it out of bounds. It'll stay with Aquinas. And I like pushing the issue here early by Bella Lachance looking up the floor, throwing it up. Didn't quite make that completion, but the attempt was there. Oliver Barron's team played a phenomenally difficult regular season schedule. They played the state champions in 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, and 7A. Five state champions on their regular season schedule. And it would have been, regardless of who won the 7A final, because they played both Nice and Diller. And, and when you reflect back on your season, and that's when you really know how special it was when you got wins over big teams like that along the way. Aaron pass from Murphy off the fingertips of Rodriguez. Rodriguez had a great start in yesterday's championship game. She had 10 points early, I should say, in the semifinal against St. Cloud. And that's why you press right there. You don't need to trap in a press, but without a trap, they force a turnover. Abigail Shue, high arcing step back three. Rebound cleared by Evans. A drive by Kenesha Godfrey. It'll stay with Tampa Bay Tech. And here's where Tech can, here's where Tech can really build off of their size inside. Dribble drive here, blocked out of bounds by Abigail Shue. Shue the transfer from Stoneman Douglas. Samara Spencer commits the foul. After that win in yesterday's semifinal, one of the reporters in the press conference asked the players from Tampa Bay Tech whether or not their effort from yesterday would be good enough today. Immediately, Janaya Barker said, no, we, we, we have to be a lot better. There were some things that they needed to clean up from that 44-32 win. And one thing early we see here are the turnovers. That's two straight turnovers by Tampa Bay Tech. And they are going to have to sharpen up on the offensive end. Jasmine Peaks draws the defensive assignment of guarding Lachance. 
Nice crossover. Lachance unchallenged at the rim. Didn't come close on that layup attempt, but it stays at this end of the floor. And, and that's where, even though Tech doesn't get a block, with, with Barker and Evans inside, just the intimidation factor causes her to alter that shot. Shoe being hounded defensively, but able to catch that inbounds pass. A shake there on Murray, but Evans was there to block the shot. Well, with the size and athleticism, Tampa Bay Tech can make up for a lot of defensive mistakes. I'm sure Jasmine Peaks would like that to be considered a pass. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That will result in a couple of free throws for Jayla Murray. And it's great transition defense for St. Thomas Aquinas, but don't they don't box out. They did a great job of getting back in transition, but don't box out, and Jayla Murray at the free throw line. The foul was on Spencer. It's her second. And the only player to commit a foul in the game is Samara Spencer. She's done it twice, so she'll check out, and in comes Alex Rizzi. And Oliver Barron's raved about how good she's been and her importance to the team's success especially in the second half of the season. So Rizzi a chance to make an early contribution with the two fouls to Spencer. And now Tech picks up the full court pressure. Not a traditional press, just kind of full court man to man. Rodriguez going to work inside, lost the handle. And Amaya Evans guarded the point guard and then fell back and guarded the post in one possession. Fourth turnover for Tech. We've yet to play four minutes. And those aren't forced turnovers, really. They're just throwing the ball out of bounds. Nice drive by Murphy. It spins out. And some contact there along the sideline. I thought Peaks might have been pushed a bit. But no whistle and a timeout for Tampa Bay Tech. Good timeout. You just turned the ball over for almost four straight times. You want to kind of not lose another possession there and maybe talk to them about take care of the basketball. So the young Titans head to their bench. A look at the playoff history for each of these teams. Playoff appearance is similar. More postseason success for St. Thomas Aquinas. State runner up in 94. Tampa Bay Tech here at the state tournament for the second consecutive season. And it, as we talked about, in the last game, the 7A championship, obviously you know, Barker and Evans are freshmen. They've never been here before. But for the sophomores that got to play here last year, that experience that Reggie Lawrence brings back is invaluable. It is, and you think of, you can't help but think about their future, too, with all of these freshmen and sophomores. Even if they can't win it all this year, future very bright uh, for Tampa Bay Tech. But regardless, the, the celebration here in, in an hour or so is going to be special as the school gets their first girls state basketball championship. Peaks open in the corner. Rodriguez up high for that rebound. And Abigail Shue bringing the ball up, running the offense. Almost like a Draymond Green point forward. Highly skilled at 5'11", signed to Columbia from the Ivy League. First team all county at Stoneman Douglas a year ago. A dribbling exhibition there from Lachance and a reach in foul on Godfrey. And we've seen some blow bys by St. Thomas Aquinas. Tampa Bay Tech, as strong as they are on the inside, their perimeter defense is not great. Murphy, challenge three with Janiah Barker stepping out there and a hand in her face. Haley Murphy knocks down the triple. And, and there's that sweet lefty stroke we talked about earlier. It was almost like a knuckleball action. Not a lot of follow through. Barker attacking on Rodriguez. Tapped up and last touch by Murphy. It'll stay with Tampa Bay Tech. And that's your game if you're Tampa Bay Tech get good shots, but when those shots don't go in, your best offense might be to attack the basket, attack the basket and get a second shot opportunity. Rebounding, definitely a concern for Aquinas coming in because of the athleticism of Tampa Bay Tech. 
I'm sure Oliver Barons would love to see Janaya Barker float out there on the perimeter <laughs> and not go inside. Shoe off the heel, another board for Evan. And Aquinas seems pretty content in their 2-3 zone, more of a traditional zone than they started out with. What's open is that foul line. Barker gets there, bumped by Murphy. Two early fouls on Spencer. That's the first on Murphy. If the fouls do mount, Aquinas is not a team with a lot of depth. You could say the same about Tampa Bay Tech. Both these teams essentially go about six deep. Heavy traffic inside. Murray able to collect it. And I'm impressed with St. Thomas Aquinas' defense. They, nice. give up, they give up an easy basket there, but they're doing some good stuff defensively. A really nice find by Peaks there along the baseline. Murphy once again challenged. That time it's short. Evans already with five rebounds in the opening quarter. Yeah, that's one thing St. Thomas Aquinas is not going to get is a lot of second shot opportunities. They've got to make every possession count. Barker shooting it with confidence from the top of the key, and she splashes that three. And that is a good-looking shot. Follow through, held her follow through. Nothing but the bottom of the net. A 10-6 lead for Tampa Bay Tech. This high-powered Aquinas offense has been held in check. And one thing they do a good job of is putting pressure on the ball. It's cost them a couple times with blow-bys, but they do pressure the ball, makes it harder to see passing lanes. Entry pass, Rodriguez. Can't get it to go around Evans. And they will rule that to be Aquinas' possession. And here underneath, out of bounds, if you're St. Thomas Aquinas, you want to run a play for one of your better shooters here. Murphy, little shake, Rodriguez off the heel. And much mm. to the chagrin of the Tampa Bay Tech faithful, that initially ruled Aquinas ball. We may get an overrule here. Good officiating. Good teamwork there by the officials. This is a crew from Miami, Greater Miami Athletic Conference officiating team. I asked Oliver Barons yesterday about the pressure, because Tampa Bay Tech is a team that, that wants to get going up and down. They would prefer the game be played at a frenetic pace. Aquinas excels at that pace as well. And he said he wasn't quite sure exactly how it was going to go. Said he probably wouldn't start in it, but they would show it a little bit because he wanted to see if it could bother Tampa Bay Tech and force some turnover. Yeah, you can tell right away that the Raiders, St. Thomas Aquinas, is, is more comfortable in transition than Tampa Bay Tech. But Tech, all of these young players, sometimes when you've got young freshmen, sophomores, they're, they're almost uh, oblivious to the pressure of a state championship game. Murphy trying to lead Rizzi. Those two not on the same page. Third Aquinas turnover. Back to the full court press for, for Aquinas. He's trying to force more turnovers. And they almost got one. Almost a 10 second call too. Evans keeps that pivot foot down. Aggressive take, a little bit too hard by Murray. Murphy's had the ball in her hands a lot. Nice bounce pass to Shue. Barker couldn't chase it down. A lay-in for Abigail Shue. Way to run, Abigail Shue. Great job by Haley Murphy, though. Set her up nicely for that layup. Clock under five. Tech not in a big rush. Barker now will have a chance to get it off before the buzzer. That will count. Yes. And I think she got it off in time. It looked initially like the official on the near sideline was going to wave it off, but then indicated it would count. So a strong finish for Tampa Bay Tech. Janiah Barker gets a layup that just beats the buzzer. Titans by four after one here in Lakeland.
back at the RP Funding Center in Lakeland. Four point lead for Tampa Bay Tech as we start the second quarter of this 8A championship game. Titans representing Hillsborough County's only public school hope here at this year's state tournament. And there have not been many state championship contenders among Hillsborough County public schools. Brandon, Hillsborough, and King, the only other teams to advance to this point. Tampa King, the only Hillsborough County public school with a state championship. It came 31 years ago. Foul against Kanisha Godfrey as we start the second quarter. That'll be her second. It was a pretty good year for public school basketball in oh, Hillsborough County. And actually, they get Bella Lachance with the foul. I beg your pardon. Yeah, I, I was with you. I thought for sure that was going on Godfrey. I liked her tenacity. I really like her tenacity now. She drew a foul. Referencing the basketball in Hillsborough County this year, Tampa Plant had an outstanding team. Plant actually beat Tampa Bay Tech. 45-40 on November 27th, early in the year, but plan unable to get here to the Lakeland Center. Murphy, change of pace to get to the rim and was able to bank it in around Barker. And that was the James Harden offense right there. Dribble, dribble, find a gap, and, and, and attack it. Barker, oh, she's in a nice rhythm offensively. Back-to-back -back jump shots for Janiah Barker. And Janiah Barker has got such a good-looking shot. Only a freshman. That's why she's one of the best players in the country. Moved from Panama City to Tampa last fall, just before Hurricane Michael hit the panhandle. A grandparents' home was destroyed in that storm. Reggie Lawrence was so excited he got a text from his administration. There's a really tall kid here <laughs> that we think is going to end up coming to school here, and she says she plays basketball. <laughs> Let's sign her up. A lot of dribbling from Aquinas, and they'll get Rodriguez for an illegal screen. And that's, that's all on the defense. Tampa Bay Tech, the defense sets that up. Frustration and illegal screen. Again, you don't have to trap people to get turnovers. You just be a pest and make them do things they normally wouldn't do. Shoe gets a hand on it. And last touch by Tampa Bay Tech. And it's such a luxury for Aquinas to have Abigail Shoe at the top of their press. 5'11", good size to run the top of that press. Long arms, obviously a lot of pressure in those passing lanes. Shoe crosses over. Finger roll off the front rim. And they're having success with those dribble drives, is Aquinas. Aquinas getting out on Barker. Another block shot for Shoe. And they'll get Godfrey with the backcourt foul. That is her second. And like you said, not a lot of depth for the Titans. Godfrey doing a great job of her on the ball pressure. A little too much pressure that time. Got the, got the foul called on her. But like we normally see here uh, with the girls' state championship, there's never really a lot of depth. And that's where the management comes in. As a, as a coach of the team, you really got to manage fouls and your roster. And that, that feeling as a coach, the pressure you feel when one of your stars, one of your important players picks up a couple fouls early in a championship game is what? It, it's, oh no. And it's, you don't want to panic, but you don't also want to get have them get their third foul as well. And really that's where you're counting on somebody to step up. Another errant pass from Tampa Bay Tech. Six turnovers for the Titans. Only silver lining is that most of the Tampa Bay Tech turnovers have been dead ball turnovers. They've been able to set their defense. That is the good news. That's If you are going to turn it over, that pitch up ahead that goes out of bounds is the lesser of two evils. Well, the chance being hounded by Jay Johnson, who's in off the bench. Able to get to the block, and free throws coming for the Vanderbilt commit. 
And here we see the old NBA, no layup rule. When Michael Jordan used to go to the rim, that's what used to happen. <laughs> now you can't do that. The type of the fouls we normally see result in a, in a review. <laughs> yes. Lachance transferred from Cypress Bay prior to her sophomore year. And Oliver Barron's raved about her floor vision, ball skills, and as you mentioned at the top, she has had a lot of signature moments in the fourth quarter this year. And that's where I'm not too concerned about her performance so far. She hasn't done anything stellar yet, uh, but by the time that fourth quarter rolls around, I'm anxious to see what she does. One of two, 14-11, Tampa Bay Tech by three. And this press is, is a lot to ask for the, your younger guards to manage. Barker, step back. And she got fouled on the three by Rodriguez. And, and that's the second poor foul on Rodriguez. She set an illegal screen at one end. And at this end, she doesn't let Barker land is the problem with the way she closes out here. You've got to let her land, and she doesn't. And there's the foul. Barker 55% at the line. Her offers include Ole Miss, Miami, and Georgia Tech. Tech was the first school to offer a scholarship. Came when she was 12 years old. <laughs> Why not? I was barely accepted by a middle school at the age of 12. She's getting college scholarship off. She hits one of three. We don't have enough time to go into my life as a 12-year-old. Long and distinguished career. <laughs> no. A sad, <laughs> a sad glimpse at the future. Lachance, good low crossover. Finger roll short, but she's hit. And we're seeing this from Aquinas a lot. I, I, joked earlier that, that it's the James Harden offense, and it really is. There's not a lot of passing. There's not a lot of movement. It's really just dribble, 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 try to create. And they've had some success with it, uh, but you don't know how long that can last. The good news for Tampa Bay Tech is they've got some closers inside. They've got some people who can protect that basket if they do get in too deep. Two fouls on Amaya Evans, but no movement from the Tech bench. So she will stay out there with five minutes to go here in the second quarter. And Oliver Barons spends the time out. Two point lead for Tampa Bay Tech. St. Thomas Aquinas certainly not going to be intimidated by the opponent or the environment given the regular season schedule that they went up against. Mentioned already, they played five state champions during the regular season. Beat American Heritage and Somerset Prep. A dramatic win against Nice December 29th. That was the championship game of a Christmas tournament. Aquinas had a big lead, couldn't hold it. It was tied with five seconds to go. Bella Lachance goes the length of the floor and lays it in at the buzzer to win it. And these are normally the types of resumes that we see from teams that make it here. Absolutely. And you see it at all levels, girls, boys, even at the college level in particular. You, you see a team like Michigan State. Their record isn't always great, regular season record, but they're the team that is always there in March and always advances because they play such a gauntlet of a record. And that's smart coaching. Uh, as a coach, you really get to determine who you play, what tournaments you play in. Now, the better the team you are, the better the tournaments you can get into, and that helps. But that's great coaching to, to risk, you know, getting some losses early uh, to get back to the Lakeland. And great to see a, a young coach. Oliver Barons is only 26. I think it would be easy to fall into the trap being a young coach of not wanting to test yourselves, wanting to have a good record especially early in your career at a school with so much athletic success as Jade Johnson buries the triple. And that's a good looking shot for Jade Johnson. 42% from behind the arc, and you can see why. Now 22 threes this year for Jade Johnson. She has state tournament experience. Was here with Panama City Mosley in the state tournament. Mosley made it here last year. Shoe one-on-one. 
Jayla Murray will pick up the foul, her second. So Jayla Murray becomes the third player on the Tampa Bay Tech roster with two fouls. And we talked about dribble drives coming off the dribble, and this is the problem. Tampa Bay Tech's going to get in foul trouble. If they've got to use their hands to defend, it's a good call. She stopped it with her hands. Murphy off the backboard with that three-point attempt. Rodriguez able to maintain possession. Lachance immediately oh. attacks. Could have easily been a foul on Johnson. Great finish by Lachance. Good job by Rodriguez to keep that play alive and then Lachance the finisher. Difficult step back there from Peaks. Rebound Johnson, her shot well short. A couple of quick ones there from Tampa Bay Tech. And Janiah Barker is a little bit frustrated as she never got involved in the offense. She hasn't been involved in the offense lately. And if she's your best player, you want to run things through her. Rizzi sits as Oliver Behrens comes back with Samara Spencer. Picked up those two early fouls. Seeing some motion. This is the best offense that Aquinas has run. As the set breaks down, it's Shu one on one. And she travels. And that's that's all you can hope for if you're Tampa Bay Tech. You just played solid defense. The paint is really not available in that possession. You don't foul and you cause a turnover. Aquinas will go offense, defense with Spencer in there for the offensive possession and back to the bench as Aquinas is on defense. Mm. And another unforced turnover. Tampa Bay Tech, halftime's coming up in a few minutes here. They've got to talk about their turnovers. Seven of them for the Titans. And as Travis has mentioned, pretty much all of them are unforced. Murphy gets past Barker, Rizzi open three. And we see the floor leadership of Bella Lachance. Sometimes a point guard, you think of them as only leading on the offensive end. Evans with the stick back in the foul. The deep shot by Barker, and you talked about how offensive rebounding could be the best offense for Tampa Bay Tech. And we see it here with Amaya Evans. Again, you want to get good shots up, but even a bad shot is a, leads to a good offensive possession here with what is almost a third opportunity there. And Amaya Evans, good-looking athlete inside. I wonder where she gets it from. Evans knocks down the free throw. She is the daughter of Reggie Evans, played 13 seasons in the NBA. Outstanding professional career. Decent financially as well. He made over $30 million, now part of the big three. Had a great run in that league last year. Samara Spencer comes back with a bucket for Aquinas. Pace has started to pick up here in the closing moments of the second quarter. Another deflection and a steal for Shu, who blows the open layup. And we've seen that from Shu a few times. Get her hand in the passing lane, leak out and get some offense, up, get to the basket, but just missed that one. Barker short on two attempts, stays with it, and the third one drops in. And again, that is their best offense. And that's, why, that's another reason why you don't want to turn the ball over. Just shoot it. <laughs> Any shot's a good shot because you have a chance for a second one. 12 points for Janaya Barker. There's another athletic finish by Lachance. And Lachance getting it in there amongst the trees and drawing some contact. Isn't getting the calls, but just making the basket. Under 90 seconds to go in the first half. Tampa Bay Tech by four. Right down the lane, Kanisha Godfrey unchallenged. And only a sophomore, Kanisha Godfrey, has given them energy on the defensive end. If she can score two, things are looking good for Tampa Bay Tech. Spencer the miss. Barker, full speed right into the chest of Lachance. No whistle. Putback doesn't go for Murray. And Rodriguez comes out of there with it for Aquinas. 
good job by Angeli Rodriguez to kind of stop the bleeding on that offensive uh, of the offensive rebounding by Tampa Bay Tech. And, and I like the no call on the charge there. I don't think it was a charge or a block. I like the no call there. And, and you can see some girls huffing and puffing now as, as the business is picking up as they're running down up and down the court. Rodriguez, a transfer from Ferguson. Ferguson in the Miami area. Dad got a job in Fort Lauderdale, so they moved north. She ends up at Aquinas. And she's been out at times this year, tendinitis in her knee. She said yesterday after the press conference that she was playing through a lot of pain, but she knew her team needed her here, needed her to step up, and she was big early in that semifinal win against St. Cloud. Well, and that's the beauty of a state championship game. There is no pain. There is no tomorrow. Uh, you can get your knees fixed, your back fixed, anything you need to get fixed. You've got lots of time to recover. You just need 32 more minutes. In this case, about 16 more minutes. One of two for Rodriguez. Under 50 seconds. Tampa Bay Tech with a five-point lead. Good coaching, Coach Lawrence. And this is where you hold for one. We saw in the last game uh, to end the half, a, a team took a poor shot early in the clock, and, and the other team leaked out and scored, and that was the difference in the game. And Bella Lachance, not exactly content to hang back and let them dribble out the clock. Under 20 to go. Still too early to shoot. I would shoot with about seven seconds left. That gives you a chance for a putback, but you might turn it over too. They run Barker into the corner. She's called for traveling. A chance to get both Murphy and Spencer back in for Aquinas. And one more offensive possession. I would have Murphy spot up here and either have Shu or Lachance create to her side and kick to her. Shu with six. Lachance screens with three. Shoe might have to put it up herself, and Aquinas does not get a shot away on a tough final possession of the first half. Teams will head to the locker rooms at halftime of the 8A championship game. Tampa Bay Tech in its first ever title game appearance, leading St. Thomas Aquinas 25-20. We'll be back for the start of the third quarter.
Tampa Bay Tech leading St. Thomas Aquinas by five here at halftime of the 8A championship game from the RP Funding Center in Lakeland. Austin Lyon, Travis Jones, our entire Spectrum Sports crew on hand for the final day of the girls' basketball season. What stood out to you in the first half? With Tampa Bay Tech, they've got the lead, but they have no bench. They've got one young lady who played two minutes uh, of that first half, and the rest are the starters. And I don't know if fatigue's going to play a part or not, but with only a five-point lead, they're going to have to find someone to fill in some time off that bench. 21 rebounds, Tampa Bay Tech plus eight on the boards, but the Aquinas pressure has bothered Tech to the tune of nine turnovers. Nine turnovers and only uh, not many steals, really, uh, by St. Thomas Aquinas. And, the, and the, pro the problem I have with Aquinas in that first half, I mentioned it a few times, they've got 20 points, but only three assists in that first half. They're not really running a lot of fluid offense. Each of these teams trying to win their first state title in program history. This is the first ever appearance in a championship game for Tampa Bay Tech. Aquinas was here 25 years ago. Actually played St. Cloud at that 94 state tournament. Beat St. Cloud in the semifinals yesterday to get here. So there is some symmetry for Aquinas. And once again, we see the nerves have really set in <laughs> for the Aquinas players. We had Bella Lachance dancing before the game when she saw herself on our monitor. The bench getting into the act as well as Tampa Bay Tech starts the third quarter with possession. I teach teenagers and they are wired differently than before. They, it's a new generation of kids that uh, don't feel a lot of pressure. Abigail Shu with her third steal. She has been active defensively. A lot of contact on that drive Ooh. by Murphy. And out of bounds to Tampa Bay Tech. I get not calling the foul, but then at least give them the ball, even if it is off of her. It, it, at least give them the ball if you're not going to call the foul. But hey, let them play. Tech showing good patience against the Aquinas pressure. And here's where you don't want to turn it over because any shot is a good shot because you always have a chance to second shot opportunities with Evans crashing, with Barker crashing. Evans attacking from the free throw line. Left-handed flip, no, but there's the offensive rebound. This time it's Jayla Murray crashing the glass. And there's another six-footer, Jayla Murray, six-foot-one. See Evans going to her left, and really there's no box out. There's a lot of standing around by Aquinas. And they simply just don't have the size. They don't have the bodies inside to keep them off the glass. Jayla Murray, who moved to Tampa from St. Louis before high school. Started in last year's state semifinal against Nova, back for her second season. Murphy, coast to coast, uncontested with a lefty layup. And Murphy has shown no fear in this game. A lot of moxie goes to the rim. Even though she got knocked down on that last one, she goes right back at it. Really productive senior season for Haley Murphy. Just under 12 points and five rebounds per game. Playing with a lot of confidence right now. And Jasmine Peaks is shooting with confidence for Tampa Bay Tech. Fourth three-pointer for the Titans. Lachance in heavy traffic. Evans upset with that <laughs> whistle. And, and all of that contact before and no call. A little inconsistent now. That's where you get frustrated as a coach and as a player. Uh, just stay consistent. And here we see peaks. Never too high, never too low is peaks. And as we've said before, Bella Lachance is a closer. Second half is usually her better half. And she had a, a, a really good first half, too. So she's on, on pace for a great state championship game. Rattles that second free throw in. Nine points for the Vanderbilt commit. Godfrey double teamed. Evans 
Good kick out. Peaks open three. She's got another one. Same spot, same shot, set up by Evans. Now 38 made threes for Jasmine Peaks. A hell ball as Godfrey went to the floor. It'll stay with Aquinas. Evans went to that left-hand shot last time. This time she goes left and sets up Peaks with a, 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 a retweet from that same spot. <laughs> now Jasmine Peaks wasn't expected to carry such a large role this year, but senior Shannon Lease suffered a torn ACL during the summer. That ultimately thrust Peaks into a much larger role and she has thrived this season for Tampa Bay Tech. Reggie Lawrence said plainly yesterday, without her, we would not be here. We would not have this opportunity. This time she's dishing. It's a Godfrey open three off the heel and rebounded by Barker. And if I'm Peaks, I go back to that same spot. Spencer takes it away in the lane. Two on one with Lachance. And a foul against Peaks. And Samara, Samara Spencer has done a good job. The last possession, she cuts to the basket this time. Attacks the rim, draws the contact. Only a sophomore is Spencer. When she gets older, stronger, she's going to get to the rim there, draw the contact, and one. Spencer is a bit of a throwback. Basketball has become almost exclusively about threes and layups. Oliver Barron said she spent a lot of time working on her mid-range game, that 12 to 18 foot area, and it's paid off. She's been excellent from that area this season and has added another dimension to what she can do offensively. Yeah, and that's something normally teenagers don't work on in their spare time. Uh, they're normally working on uh, deep threes like Steph Curry. An aggressive drive there from Godfrey. She went all the way to the lane and with Lachance in trouble, on the baseline, Oliver Barons burns a timeout. Good job. And that's a good timeout by Barons. Well, Aquinas seeking their first ever state championship, bolstered by some fresh faces on their campus. Several notable transfers, including Abigail Shu from Parkland Douglas, Angelie Rodriguez from Ferguson, and Samara Spencer, who lived in Fort Lauderdale, moved to Fort Myers to play at that school last year, came back this season and is shining for St. Thomas Aquinas. And Abigail Shu was in one of the classrooms at Stoneman Douglas at the time of the shooting last February. She actually suffered a torn ACL two weeks prior struggled to get away from campus. She was waiting for an elevator as the shooting started. Fire alarms were going off. The teacher advised her, you don't want to be waiting for an elevator. You got to try to do what you can to get down the stairs. So she did. She was able to get out, able to hobble away from the campus. Took about 45 minutes for her to get in touch with her parents. And you can imagine how agonizing that time was. She was in building three. Shooting occurred in building 12. So she wasn't close to it. But obviously when you're there, you feel like you're very close to what's going on. Yeah, I'm a high school teacher, and it's something that's on your mind uh, quite often. And we have code red drills, and there's a debate about what to do in, in case of that. And uh, I, I can't imagine that 45-minute wait that her parents had to go through. A couple of free throws for Lachance. Adam Lichtenstein of the South Florida Sun Sentinel with some great reporting on the story about Shoe that ran near the one-year anniversary of the Douglas shooting. And it's great to see Shu thriving here at Aquinas. And she is headed to play at Columbia next season. Aquinas has crawled back to within two. Saw a close 7A championship game. Looks like we may have a close one here as well. Jayla Murray hadn't hit a three the entire season. And she drops one in the state championship game. Uh, she's been waiting all year for that one. Six-footer, we talked about her get, uh, also on the boards with an offensive rebound, and now the three. Murphy turns the corner. They're trying to get it to Rodriguez. They get a timeout for Aquinas, which is a huge break. I don't think Murphy had possession as we take you back to the Murray three. And that's just a catch and shoot spot up three. 
one that I'm sure you practice all the time, but uh, just like you said, saving it for the state title game. How about Tampa Bay Tech from three-point range? Six of 12. They only averaged 3.4 made threes per game. We referenced the Tampa Bay Tech notable win against Miami Country Day. Some publications have Country Day as the number one team in the country. They won the 4A state championship in dominating fashion here earlier in the week. Janiah Barker, 23 points, 13 rebounds in that game, double doubles for both Evans and Murray. And these are kids, these are youngsters, these are freshmen and sophomores who are, like you said, beating maybe the best team in the country. Here they are with the lead in the state championship game, and it's something that you rarely see here is just these young kids. Normally, when you're young like this, you get here and you kind of fold to the pressure a little bit, but you got a couple more years left. What we're witnessing right now is they want to win now. Made it here last year, lost in the state semifinals to Nova. It was a close game, 46-41. Reggie Lawrence said his team was just happy to be here last year, which is what we hear a lot from coaches. And then you come back the second season with a much different mentality. You come back with a different mentality and, and some new uh, horses in your stable, <laughs> some new players that are going to make a big difference too. Spencer has an opening. There's that mid-range game we talked about off the back rim. A push shot from the free throw line. And Tampa Bay Tech much more patient in this third quarter than they were the entire first half, and that's why we see less turnovers by them. And there Nine turnovers at the half, only two so far here in the third. Jayla Murray again. So she's had a put back offensive rebound. She's hit a three. Now a 15-footer. She's showing the whole repertoire here tonight. Eight points for Jayla Murray, the 6'1 sophomore. Five in a row for Tampa Bay Tech. La Chance with a dribbling exhibition. That fouls on Evans. It's going to be her fourth. And her father was a fiery NBA player, and she's showing some of that fire right there with that foul call. <laughs> Evans was keeping it together after the third foul. Yeah. Not as happy with the fourth. Uh. <laughs> so Evans going to have to head to the bench. Jay Johnson will get another chance to play. Good backdoor cut. Spencer's pass deflected, retrieved by Shue. Murphy gets inside. Rodriguez uses a pump fake. Good possession there from Aquinas. Absolutely, you said it. You said it. It's not just dribble, dribble, dribble. They're actually cutting. They're passing. They're up faking and driving. You said it best. Great offense. The fire there by Haley Murphy. Almost got the assist. Rodriguez committed to Jose Fernandez and USF. One more year of high school, six foot one inch junior. It's both free throws. Rodriguez, 13.7 boards in yesterday's semifinal. Three points so far today. Some contact there on the shot by Murray. Parker with a third opportunity. Aquinas trying to take advantage. Spencer, offensive foul. And I love, I, I love what I just saw by Janaya Barker. She got hammered at one end, hustles back. She doesn't take the charge, but she's the first one to pick up the girl. Picks up Jay Johnson, smacks her on the backside and says, good job. I'm not sure. This fine crew of officials got that right at either end. <laughs> well, that balances out then. Coming up on two minutes to go here in the third. Five-point lead for Tampa Bay Tech. Godfrey around and out. Rodriguez, strong rebound. Really impressed by the handles of Abigail Shue. Gets to 15 feet. That is a really tough shot. Rodriguez sticks with it. And, we, and we've talked glowingly 
about the Lady Titans and their offensive rebounds, but there we see Angeli Rodriguez with a stick back. Parker driving the baseline, grabbed by Rodriguez. That'll be the third foul on the future USF Bull. And that's a good job of Barker not settling. She had a pretty good look at the rim. She could have just caught it and shot it, but caught it, ripped through, and drew the foul. Barker's been quiet here in the third. She had 12 points at the half and has not scored so far in the third quarter. Peaks, difficult shot, another offensive rebound. Barker a third opportunity and she sticks it in. And sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need an easy basket around the rim to get you going in a half at both ends. A rejection on Rodriguez and some fire from the freshman. We've seen fire from her before for a teammate and here she's celebrating her own success underneath. Shoe finds a gap. Tough drive by Abigail Shoe. And she's giving us a little bit of everything. You said it best before. Great handle. She can shoot it. Plays good defense. The total package is Shoe. One possession game with under a minute to go here in the third. And Aquinas, they're okay. No, they're gonna match up now. I thought they were gonna let them hold it for one, but now they're gonna match up. And we haven't seen the dribble drives by Tampa Bay Tech. There's Peaks. They'll get a bump on Bella Lachance. That's her third. So three on Lachance, three on Spencer, three on Rodriguez for Aquinas. And we've got some some people coming to the bench, coming to the table here. A good job by Coach Barons taking out Lachance. You can sit her now for just 28 seconds of clock time, but a lot more real time to get her rested with three fouls. Joseph and Rizzi the check in. Nice ball fake by Peaks up and around Shoe. Archer got the rebound, off. and they will get her for a loose ball foul. No, no. It's Jayla Murray instead of Barker. Third on Jayla Murray. A fortunate call for Tampa Tech. It could have been the third on Barker. And that rest for Bella Lachance. A little bit less than I thought she'd get. She's back in. Shoe trying to get away from Murray. A lot of contact off the ball. Clock down under 10. Now down to five, poked away by Barker. With two, with one, that'll count. Off the backboard from Jayla Murray. It has been close throughout, and with eight minutes to go, one of these teams is gonna be a state champion for the first time ever. Tampa Bay Tech leading St. Thomas Aquinas by three. We head to the fourth quarter here from the RP Funding Center in Lakeland. 39-36, Tampa Bay Tech in front of St. Thomas Aquinas. All five starters for Tech, either freshmen or sophomores, that group accounting for 77% of their scoring. Yeah, we uh, there hasn't been a lot of substitutions for the Titans. Uh, and we'll see. Now, they're used to it, though, is the thing. They've been doing it now for about 30 games. So they are uh, used to playing the entire game like this, never on this stage per se, uh, but they're used to this. They're used to being a little winded here in the fourth quarter and playing through it. It's been a while since these teams found themselves in a really close game. Tampa Bay Tech 
dominated the region, beat Braden River by 11. That was the closest game they've had. Aquinas played some challenging opponents in regionals, but won all of them comfortably, and they won pretty easily yesterday. So we'll see how the nerves are as we head into the closing moments here. That's off the back of Jay Lemurray and out of bounds to Aquinas. And give credit to Bella Lachance. All five foot six of her down there just throwing her body around, trying to create space to not give up another offensive rebound. Aquinas averaging almost 68 points per game. Right now they are on 36 as we head to the fourth quarter. And we talked about that Tampa Bay Tech defense. We also talked about the offense of St. Thomas Aquinas, and it's the defense of Tampa Bay Tech that's winning the day so far. Barker forced the steal. Peaks has been huge with a couple of threes for Tampa Bay Tech. A timeout for Reggie Lawrence. And I'm anxious to see when Coach Lawrence uh, comes back with Amaya Evans with four fouls. Normally, a lot of coaches like to wait to that four-minute mark here in the last quarter, but we'll see. Reggie Lawrence played football in high school and college, always enjoyed coaching. Right out of college, he coached a girls team at the Boys and Girls Club. He said he quickly figured out that girls listen more and they're more eager to learn the game, and that's what's driven his desire to be a girls basketball coach as opposed to a, boy, as opposed to a boys coach. Yeah, I've had friends, uh, my brother in fact too, has coached both, boys and girls, and they all say the same thing, that girls will run through a, a wall for you without even asking, and they're willing to listen, willing to learn, and uh, and uh, they'll, uh, they'll give it all they have out there, whereas sometimes with the boys, you get some prima donnas, you get some guys that think they know it all, whereas the girls, for the most part, are much more enjoyable to coach. And he's come into some really young talent. There's two playoff wins in a 41-year stretch for Tampa Bay Tech. Went 3-1 and one in regionals a year ago, lost in the state semifinals. 4-0 so far this season as they're in the state championship game. Aaron pass there from Jay Murray. That's back to what we saw a lot from Tampa Bay Tech in the first half. Well, what Coach Barons did is he changed the defense. He went to a 1-3-1, one, one, and it wasn't an aggressive 1-3-1 one, one at all, but just a different look sometimes coming out of it a quarter break is enough to get the other team to turn the ball over. 12 turnovers for Tampa Bay Tech, but just three so far here in the second half. Spencer, short with the three that would have tied the game. Nice work by Rizzi to keep the possession alive. And it was Shu who just tapped it to her that, that started all that. And Aquinas didn't run a whole lot of offense against man, against the zone, even less. Murphy's three off the mark. Shu takes it away. Spencer with the ball fake. Some contact on that drive, but no whistle. So we've seen a couple turnovers to start this fourth quarter for Tampa Bay Tech. That's a trend they don't want to continue. Oh, Great pass. find. Barker underneath. Johnson wide open for the layup. Outstanding look. At first I thought, where is she throwing that? She saw something that I didn't see. Murphy backs it out. Shu has a size advantage, leaning in on Johnson, and there's a foul. <laughs> and Coach Lawrence, Coach Lawrence had to take a jog to the other end of his bench on that call. There's been a lot of contact. But look at this pass. By Janiah Barker. Finding Jay Johnson. Good cut by Johnson, too. And when you're trying to scrap your way back into a game, you've got to take advantage of the free throws. When you are at that line, you've been down the whole game, not by much, but down five here, every free throw is going to count. One of two for Shu. Someone's got a flash middle. Close to 
10 seconds. Godfrey just does get it across the line to Barker. Tampa Bay Tech has been under control. Barker with maybe a little bit of a push off to clear some space against Lachance, but no whistle. And I like the aggressiveness by Barker, not settling for an outside shot. Spencer open three. Hasn't been in it since the early foul trouble. She is tied up. And Jay Johnson. And Reggie Lawrence going to come back with Amaya Evans. 6'2 freshman playing with four fouls and 443 remaining here in the 8A championship game. Lachance mid-range gets a friendly bounce. And that's a set underneath out of bounds play. A timeout by Coach Barons. And they're going to talk about how they're going to chip away at this four-point lead with just about four and a half to play. Well, we showed you the influx of talent that came into the program. College is certainly noticing the players on the Aquinas roster. Abigail Shue and Haley Murphy both signed. Murphy going to St. Francis of Pennsylvania. Lachance and Rodriguez, juniors that have already committed. And Samara Spencer, a sophomore, already has an offer from Jose Fernandez at USF. Yeah, USF getting active there in South Florida. Good job for them. A USF, a perennial NCAA tournament team under Jose Fernandez. They've been hit hard by injuries this year. Not quite as successful in the American Athletic Conference. Rodriguez will be on campus in a couple of years, and who knows, perhaps one year after that, Spencer will join her at USF. And that's what's always fun to call these state championship games. You always see so many kids that are going to go off to college and continue their playing career. It's, it's kind of fun to keep tabs on them and, and, and see what they do at the next level. Both boys and girls, it's, it's hard to turn on the TV without seeing someone from right. the state of Florida that is contributing in, in a game on TV. It's incredible. Yep. Peaks continues to do quality work against the Aquinas pressure. And she's one, the one that has stepped up. She hit those two big threes, of course, but she has been solid throughout this game. And we haven't called her name a lot other than those two threes. That's a good dribble drive and kick. And again, you got Evans back in the game, and that's why. Left-hander misses on that attempt. Barker saves it to Evans off the side of the rim, retrieved by Jayla Murray. Four shots already for Tampa Bay Tech, and the possession is not over. And Bella the chance is limping around. Not sure if she turned an ankle or got a Charlie horse, but she is not 100% right now. Uh, Lachance gutting it out. Tears on her face in the paint. And now she's going to dribble the ball up the floor, toss it ahead to Spencer. That won't stay down. Shu with the rebound. And Shu wanted it in the corner. Buries the three to make it a one point game. Abigail Shu creates a second opportunity for her team, and then she becomes that second opportunity with that corner three. Lots of pressure on Peaks, and it's taken away by Spencer. She'll go all the way and lay it in. St. Thomas Aquinas has the lead. Tied out, Tampa Bay Tech. And St. Thomas Aquinas, again, Bella Lachance limping around, gutting it out. But here we see Samara Spencer taking her time, laying it in. You see the passion by Haley Murphy. And Tampa Bay Tech is frustrated. They thought two possessions in a row, there was a lot of contact. Reggie Lawrence trying to regroup. Reminder that neither of these teams have ever won a state girls basketball championship. Well, it's going to be a huge moment for whoever emerges victorious here in the final 256. We saw St. Thomas Aquinas athletic director George Smith walking by our broadcast position before the game. 
asked him what, what programs besides girls basketball have never won a state title at Aquinas. Such a decorated athletic program. And you see George Smith in the shot there, in the middle of the stands, looking down at his phone. Smith used to be the football coach and now the AD. <laughs> so what other teams haven't won a state title? He thought about it for a second and said bowling, to which you and I both had the same reaction. I'd hate to be the bowling coach oh, at Aquinas. It's a lot of pressure. There's only one man that could fill that role, it's Paul Meek, the former bowling coach at Edgewater High School. Under three to go, Lachance still out there and noticeably limping all the way in, Godfrey unchallenged. Banks it in to put Tampa Bay Tech back in front. And Kenesha Godfrey hasn't done much besides her defensive tenacity. But there, picks a good time to score to get them the lead again. Lachance off the bounce as the lead seesaws back and forth in the closing minutes. I think Lachance is fine. Peaks with the crossover. Difficult shot. Rebound Evans. Lost the handle out of bounds to Aquinas. So Aquinas with the lead and the ball. First time they had led in the game was that layup by Spencer. And they're running, they're running a delay offense. Oh, this is a this is a kill the clock offense, really. Not even looking at the rim. Pretty risky to do that with this much time left. Spencer certainly a capable ball handler, but she misses the layup. Barker pulls it down, and here comes Tampa Bay Tech. Godfrey spinning into the lane. Forced it up. Nice rebound by Evans, and she will dribble it out. Good timeout by Coach Lawrence. Settle them down. And how about Evans? <laughs> she, is, she is the cleanup crew. Every shot that's missed, she's getting her hands on. 11 rebounds for Amaya Evans. And she's out there with four fouls. Agonizing moments for a father who's seen plenty of dramatic <laughs> moments playing 13 years in the NBA. Hey, there's more pressure when it's daddy's little girl out there than any NBA game. So Evans and Tampa Bay Tech trailing by one, 92 seconds to go. What do you expect to see from them offensively? The Titans have got to go to Janai Barker. She's been pretty quiet this quarter. You've got to find her, and she's good at not settling. So even if she's open for a shot, she might create on her own and get to the rim. And again, get a shot up here. Don't turn it over and let Evans go in and clean it up. St. Thomas looks like they're going to be happy with their 2-3 zone. What you don't want is Janiah Barker just standing with it against the zone, though. Let her dive to the middle, dive to the soft spot, run something for her right now. But I think she's standing. Oh, oh, they're moving her. Good job. They've got her in the high post. And it's open. Cut off on the baseline. Nearly turned over. Good save there from Godfrey. Godfrey will rise. Deep three. Off the back rim. Another rebound for Evans. Oh. All the way around the rim. It drops in. <laughs> Timeout, Tampa Bay Tech. They have regained the lead. Amaya Evans, yet another rebound. That's what I said. Get a shot up and let her clean it up. And she's got an easy she's got an easy put back if she just goes up with it. But then she spins in the traffic and still gets it. That ball hit every part of the rim before it dropped in. 58.6. And now it's Aquinas that trails by a point. Poor Kanisha Godfrey. She got wiped out on that play, but by her own teammate, Janiah Barker. Just leveled her. Tampa Bay Tech led this game from the outset. It was close throughout, but Aquinas didn't lead until the layup by Spencer 
with about three minutes to go. And the lead is seesawed back and forth. Lachance under heavy pressure. Tampa Bay Tech's got to be careful. A foul would put Aquinas at the line. This is where it's such a bonus to have a college-bound point guard on your team, another college-bound off guard on your team that's not going to turn the ball over. Under 40, Spencer. Got the defender on her hip. Rodriguez inside. Timeout. Good timeout. Excellent timeout by Coach Barons. He had Angeli Rodriguez in an uncomfortable position. I can't say what a good timeout that is. 34.7 remaining. That is the final timeout for Aquinas. Both teams are out of timeouts. That was going to be a turnover. Uh, if not for the timeout of our Barron. So you don't worry about that being your last timeout. Now, offensively, I don't know why they're getting it out of the hands of Bella Chance. Let her create. I would let her create to choose side and let them play a two-man game. It'll be up to the players to decide it. No more timeouts either way with 34.7 remaining. Good catch by Abigail Shue. Pressure mounting from Tampa Bay Tech. Defensively, a reach-in foul on Murray will put Abigail Shue at the free throw line for a one-and-one. One. You just had a sense as the pressure mounted up yes. with Tampa Bay Tech out high that there might be a reach-in foul. And here is Abigail Shue. What an opportunity. Mm. You talk about pressure. We talked earlier about her being at Stoneman Douglas that day. Now well, that's pressure. <laughs> this is not pressure. This is a game. This is a sport that they love to play. And, and her not succumbing to the pressure here. Chance to give Aquinas the lead, and she drills it. Two free throws for Abigail Shue, under 30 seconds to go. And you've got to go Barker. Godfrey had the pass deflected. It's taken away by Murphy. No oh, timeout. No, he didn't call it. A timeout given to Aquinas. They are out of timeouts. The officials are going to talk about it. If they rule that he did call timeout, it's going to be a technical foul and two free throws for Tampa Bay Tech. The official just pointed to and said she called timeout. The official looked at the coach and pointed and said she called timeout, referring to a player. So it'll be two free throws for Tampa Bay Tech. Jasmine Peaks is going to step to the line 72% on the season. Four for four in yesterday's semifinal. These are her first attempts today. Hmm. Larry Bird always said this is the toughest free throw he's ever shot with nobody in the lane. Drops the second one in. Tampa Bay Tech will have possession with 18.6 seconds to go. We gotta check and see if Reggie Evans was ever a teammate with Chris Webber. <laughs> Four team fouls on Aquinas, so they can foul the clock down if they desire. Mm. Mm. No timeouts, remember, they get it into peaks. Here we go. Yeah, they got fouls to give. Down There's under foul. 10. Foul, you got fouls to give. Godfrey. Evans going to let it go in and out. Shoe the rebound, and we're headed for overtime. Woo! Wow. If she hits that shot, Aquinas is going to be sick all summer, not just because of the timeout call, but the fact that they had three fouls to give. They could have just fouled this game away. One more look at the final sequence. Evan is looking for somebody, and, and that's something that next year at this time, she's going to have the confidence to not look for somebody else. She's just going to take that shot right away and knock it down. Amaya Evans, the youngest player on the team at 14 years old. 
free throw line jumper and bounces in and out. And so we will play four more minutes. Boy, what a finish. You had the two huge free throws by Shu, the steal by Haley Murphy. The officials say she calls timeout. Technical foul, two free throws. Peaks hits one of two, and then the miss by Evans with time winding down. And now they get a timeout. They each get another timeout, so they each have a timeout going into the overtime. I'd always like the, uh, the rule, too, if you could give a, every player another foul uh, for the timeout as well. If you're going to add a timeout, why not give every player one more foul to give in this overtime play? At least in this game, it's going to be only five. Jayla Murray and Amaya Evans are the two players with four fouls. Aquinas has three players with three fouls. Tap goes to Godfrey, and Tampa Bay Tech will have it first in overtime. Parker in the corner, shoe out there to challenge. Nice find, free throw line jumper. Jayla Murray drops it in. And she has had a solid game at both ends of the floor. Double, double. Haven't called her name in a while, but she steps up big here. First shot of the overtime. 10 points, 10 rebounds for Murray. Tampa Bay Tech with the lead in overtime. Lachance, Spencer. Unable to answer for Aquinas. They'll allow that to go out of bounds. Tampa Bay Tech will have possession. And I'm curious as to why Haley Murphy hasn't taken a shot in a long time. I thought she would be more active here in the second half and now into overtime. Peaks across the midcourt line. Well, possessions magnified here in the extra period. And now with the lead, still a lot of time obviously, but with the lead, Tampa Bay can be really patient and realize that how crucial turnovers are, it almost cost them the game. He gets it to the wing, Barker working for position. Godfrey into the lane, off the window, it drops in. And, and there's two baskets for the Lady Titans in overtime that are from the other people, the, the people that aren't the superstars on this team right now. Almost halfway through the overtime. Couple of buckets for Tampa Bay Tech, nothing yet for Aquinas. Spencer in the lane, off the back rim, skies for the rebound, Peaks ends up with it for Tampa Bay Tech. And Peaks just does all the little things. She's handled the ball against the pressure. She gets a big rebound there. Looking to go inside to Evans. Barker matched up with Shue. I would Wants a clear out. Yeah, I, I wouldn't risk an offensive foul by Evans. Here comes Spencer. Some contact there as Spencer goes down. Here comes Tampa Bay Tech. Reggie Evans <laughs> standing up saying, slow it down. Spencer is still down at the other end of the floor. And she took a hard fall. And Spencer has been the most active member of St. Thomas's team here in the overtime. She's 0 for 2 from the floor, 0 for 3 now with no foul called there. And she's in a lot of pain. The trainers tending to Samara Spencer. One more look. And it's actually a good no call. Lands awkwardly after she went up and attempted that layup. And, and this is. And Spencer is going to have to be carried. Well, that's a good assistant coach. Over beyond the <laughs> bench area. So the training staff can continue to tend to her. 5'8 sophomore guard. 
Second leading scorer for Aquinas. And this puts Rizzi in the game, who hasn't been in the game much since the first half. So she uh, is thrown into the mix here and, happen, and is going to have to help the Raiders get a stop. Shoe guarding peaks out high. And now they're going to a spread delay offense. Barker mishandles the dribble, ball loose on the floor. It's a jump ball, and the arrow will give it to Aquinas. So you learned there, if you're Tampa Bay Tech, that that's not what we want to do. We don't want the ball 25 feet from the rim. We really want to try to score still, even though we're up. Coming up on a minute to go, Kaylin Joseph out there for Aquinas. She has not seen a lot of action. And Lachance turns it over. Kanisha Godfrey into the passing lane. Lays it up, no. Rebound, put back for Jayla Murray. Jayla Murray. Rizzi at the other end. They'll get a bump on Barker with 45.7 remaining. And that stops the clock, St. Thomas Aquinas couldn't ask for anything better there. But here we see the follow-up. Too many people give up on plays, but not Murray. Another offensive putback. And it's gonna have to be Rizzi and Joseph here for Aquinas. They have taken Samara Spencer all the way back to the Aquinas locker room. Missed the second free throw, tried to go in early. And so it'll be dead ball out of bounds to Tampa Bay Tech. 54-49 with 45.7 to go. Still only five team fouls on Aquinas. They get Joseph with the reach in. That'll be the sixth. So the next team foul will be free throws for Tampa Bay Tech, but you're looking at three one and one situations. Yeah, it's, it's, they're not in the double bonus yet. People were shocked by this. They're, she went right to the line thinking by sure, surely we're in the one-on-one yet by now, but no. Nope. Peaks is a 72% free throw shooter. You want to try and avoid having her be the yep. player at the line. She's the best free throw shooter on the team. And I'm sure she doesn't want to give it up. They will foul Barker, who is 55%. So they end up getting a lower percentage free throw shooter on the line by showing some patience there, a one and one for Janiah Barker. And, and here's where we see this uh, freshman and, and just see kind of what she's made of here. Front end of a one on one, great follow through, sticks the landing. Barker leads all scores with 17. She's also got nine rebounds. One of two, Evans, another offensive rebound. They'll get her for a foul, and Amaya Evans is just fouled out of the game. We might need security <laughs> down here for her dad. So Evans fouls out with 32.9 left in overtime. It's two free throws for Aquinas. They are in the double bonus. And I always like this when players foul out, go out, go down and shake the coach's hand. A lot of times the coach, get out of here. I don't want to shake your hand right now. Evans so productive on the glass. She fouls out with five points and 12 rebounds, created numerous second and third chances. So two free throws for Rizzi. She can make it a four-point game. And she did a good job at this end of boxing out. And that's why the call was made. She, it looked like... Evans went over her back, and really Evans just went straight up. But because Rizzi was down there. Uh, Rizzi misses both. Barker skies for the rebound and throws it away. Murphy trying to get up a three. Lachance tans it from the corner. Clock running with 22 seconds to go. They foul Kanisha Godfrey. Three-point game, Godfrey a 49% free throw shooter. We're not, I'm not sure why Barker just throws this away. And here we see Lachance, who hasn't shot a lot of deep shots. Barry, and what, like we talked about, the fourth quarter is her best. But now Lachance 
has to be down on the low block and box out Janaya Barker here in case of a miss. A one and one for Godfrey. Big first free throw to make it a two possession game. St. Thomas Aquinas still has that one timeout. You want to attack the rim and score and call timeout here. That's the last timeout for Tampa Bay Tech, and he's telling them not to foul, which, which, which normally leads to a wide open layup at the other end. Notice the signs in the stands there for Kanisha Godfrey. She moved to Tampa as an eighth grader from Ohio. She was the talk of the county bonded with Shannon Lies, who was then a sophomore at Tech, decided that Shannon went to Tampa Bay Tech. Kanisha wanted to go to Tampa Bay Tech. <laughs> yeah, and I'm most happy for them because they no longer have to live in Ohio. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the true victory here for them. So 57-52, Aquinas down five. They've got a timeout left. Are you looking for a three here or willing to drive it and take a quick two? My experience would be that you drive to the rim, get the layup, and call timeout because that's your easiest shot. Uh, that's the way you cut it to a one possession game. You hope for a steal, you foul right away, and hope for a miss on that front end of a one-on-one. -on -one. There's a lot of hope right now. Lachance working off a high screen. Oh. Foul on Rizzi setting the screen, and that is Probably going to do it. Getting the ball inbounds is key. Murray to throw it in. They get it into Godfrey. Grabbed immediately by Joseph. And it will be a two-shot foul. That is ten team fouls on Aquinas. And if she hits both of these, it's definitely over. If she only hits one or none of these, if she misses the front end here, there's a glimmer of hope. Two shot foul. Nope. They were like me. Some, they thought it was a one on one. Run some time off the clock. I'll have to reset that. And officials are going to come together to make sure they get the right amount of time up on the clock. Well, Coach Berenz is. It? arguing that there's only nine team fouls. It should have been a one-on-one. -on -one. That's what I was thinking. I thought I thought we were only at nine, but I've never been good at math. Well, Samara Spencer has hobbled back to the bench area. Ice on her left ankle. One more free throw for Godfrey. Either way, it'll be a two-possession game. She drops it in. Six-point margin. Aquinas needs a three, and then they've got to get a timeout and hope for a turnover. Lachance has to hoist it from deep off the front rim. Abigail Shue. Murphy will let it go off the side of the rim, and that's going to do it. Final seconds tick off the clock. What a moment for Tampa Bay Tech. The first ever state championship for the Titans. And they're all babies. They're freshmen. They're sophomores. Oh, we could see a dynasty in the making here. <laughs> well, we knew whoever won, it was going to be special at the finish. And it's Tampa Bay Tech. In their first ever title game appearance, they win gold. Now what a moment between father and daughter. Amaya Evans, who fouled out of the game but contributed so much. It's a hug from her dad. And I would bet for all that Reggie Evans has accomplished as a professional athlete, that might be his favorite athletic <laughs> moment right there. That's what I talked about earlier. It's different uh, when it's your little girl out there. Uh, when you were scrapping in the NBA, it was one thing, but to see your daughter 
win a state championship has got to be very special. And the hardest job tonight is security right now, trying to get people off the court. So not only are we seeing a team win their first state title, we're seeing kids, we're seeing freshmen and sophomores getting to celebrate a team's first state title. And now the coaching staff has got the daunting task of getting them back to the bench. And the senior laden group from St. Thomas Aquinas. Haley Murphy, Abigail Shu, among their senior starters. Certainly some quality returning players with Lachance Spencer and Rodriguez. But it's the end for several players on that Aquinas bench. Not the way they wanted to see it end. Tampa Bay Tech emerges victorious. And what a celebration it will be tonight for the Titans. 58-52 our final in overtime. Tampa Bay Tech wins their first ever state championship here in the 8A title game. For Travis Jones and our entire crew, led by producer Chris McCulley and director Zach Forrestal, Austin Lyons saying so long from the RP Funding Center in Lakeland. If you want to see the presentation of the medals and the runner-up and championship trophy, stay with us. We'll continue to stream those as Travis and I sign off. We will see you for the 9A title game coming up at 7 between Wakaiva and Miami High.
Lions teams here tonight. 